Hello, more work on getting this little Shoblin 70 lathe reconditioned, and uh, today's episode, let's finish off the tailstock. I'd previously put up a video on working on this tailstock quill, so I don't want to have too much duplication, but that previous video, it's just a bit clunky to fit into this series. Uh, there's a link to it in the description, and all I want to do here is very quickly cover off the main points, uh, and then see the other video for a little more detail. First we need to set the work up in the fore jaw and align it in two planes. It's relatively easy to set work up in the fore jaw chuck and get it uh, concentric to within a tenth, but uh, the real challenge is doing so in two planes. What that means is that the work is concentric along its length and it's not at all askew. How I do this is I put a soft copper uh, wrapper around the work and put it in a good quality fore jaw. By the way, even the best fore jaw is not going to do this without some tweaking. I'm using an almost new Pratt Bernard, but it's still not going to align things uh, like, uh, parallel to the lathe axis to a tenth. And then it's a very slow and can be very tedious and time consuming iterative process of bringing it into alignment. You start by bringing it into rough alignment using the jaws to the plane closest to the chuck. Then you move out from there to the end of the work and bring that into alignment not by moving the chuck jaws but by tapping it. The tapping slightly deforms the copper. This is where the trickiness comes in because if you torque too much on the first go around close to the chuck you're going to work harden the copper and it will be less pliable when you go to tap things in at the other end. Uh, however, you have to sort of get it to the point where you are, when you are perfectly concentric in two planes, to have the copper uh, fairly hardly uh, squeezed by the jaws so that it is work hardened or else the workpiece isn't going to be so a solid setup. I find this can be very challenging. Sometimes it uh, takes an enormous amount of time and then you, you just sort of don't end up at the right place with not enough softness left in the copper but not perfectly aligned and you know you walk away and come back and re-anneal the copper and try again. But it's what you have to do to get things really really accurate. Still working on the setup here. Um, when you're working with the taper, it's uh, very important that the cutting tool, in this case a small grinding point, is at the same height as the work. So um, one way to do this is I'm just, I've got a, a drop indicator or dial indicator here that I've zeroed out on the high point of the work. This is 0.791. And then I take this. And I go over to here, the, uh, the difference, I'm looking for half the difference, which is 83 and a half thou. With some adjustments done to the tool post height, it's not too hard to get it right on the center height. I'm going to use a Hobbinger 102 uh, lathe to do this grinding, and the slide rest is set up. The first thing I did was prove that the uh, outside of the top of the slide rest is within a tenth uh, to the motion of that axis, which uh, I did. And then I set up my machine tool alignment guide to uh, check the sign bar and get the angle right. It's just a matter of uh, tapping over the top part of the slide rest until you get no run out along the sign bar. This device, by the way, is my version of a Kingway alignment tool. I think there's a few improvements to it, and it's just proved to be a uh, very useful workshop tool for a variety of things and indispensable for scraping. If this is of interest, I did this as an article, a complete build article in Home Shop Machinist beginning in March 2019. Dress a point in the grinder, splash a bit of coolant on here and there from a squeeze bottle, and grind till you spark out. I'm using a large cast iron dovetail reference flat just because it's really convenient. It's got a sharp corner so it gets into the corner on the tailstock. Uh, heavy amounts of blue to start with and this is the first pattern. So time to get scraping. 
of course with the scraping you're not just striving for flatness you need to get the base parallel to the axis of the quill I've set it up on a couple of uh, granite parallels and and constantly taking readings with a, every iteration taking readings with a tenth indicator so I'm bringing it into flatness but also creating this alignment simply by concentrating which end I'm uh, doing the scraping on when you're scraping you need to have some clearance going into the corners and one way to do so is with a hacksaw blade you don't usually think of a hacksaw having much of a role in precision work but I'm just using it here to create some clearance I rotate it a bit so that I end up with a bit of a curved groove uh, less chance of a stress riser as opposed to straight back and forth but just opening it up a bit so I can get the scraping tool in there I'll often make notes and diagrams as I'm working through the iteration so I can remember where I was and where I'm trying to get to. Things are progressing well, but there's looming trouble in paradise. And 2.8. Just to check if we have any rock, I'll put pressure on the tailstock. You see, we do have a, a quite a bit of rock there. If I press down there, I'm getting 2. And yeah, this is a this is a problem. I've developed rock in the uh, in the the tailstock. The center of the tailstock is high. I'm trying to feel if if I can feel that, but you can tell because if I set this up and I press there, I'm not getting anything. But if I press on the front, I get some movement, and if I press on the back. I'm getting half a thou, half a thou rock there, so I'm going to have to uh, try to work that out. The solution is to scrape down the center of the tailstock so that you're only getting contact at the ends, and then carefully bring the ends down to create both perfect alignment uh, with the quill and also flatness with the base. Apologies for the focus here. I certainly can see why professional videographers have cameramen. But uh, hopefully you can see that I've got things to, uh, uh, I'll call it about a tenth. It might be slightly over a tenth, but uh, it's pretty close to a tenth. I can't actually recall, and things are out of focus, and there's some parallax. But my goal in getting this uh, test was two within a tenth. For the sharp eye, you might have noticed the difference in finish on some of the quills and some of these shots. I actually re ended up grinding off and sending out for re-chroming and redoing the quill uh, as I was not happy with the finish I got the first go around. I'm a CBN beginner and I did not have the wheel dressed properly and was getting some bounce. After working on the tiny lip that aligns along the front, um, which I did via grinding, I've got some pretty good results. Four point, sorry, that's yeah, there. Four point, no, four point one, four point two, and there I am. Four point one. So I'm within a tenth over. That's probably six inches, which is pretty amazing. Um, just to make sure I haven't got kind of a concave, sort of convex surface here. If I press in on this, you'll see there's no indicator movement whatsoever. So I'm not rocking. So with that, I'll call the, uh, the tail stock done. I think everything's good with it. Hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, I'll start working on the next installment. Thanks for watching.